we're going to have a look at a kit from uh, QRP Labs. Uh, we've, we've been trying to uh, put together now for, oh, it's got to be well over a year, uh, just finding the time to uh, to get round to doing it. So uh, we've got a bit of, bit of free time, so we're going to uh, we're going to have a quick play with this and see, uh, see if we can get some of it put together. So this is a kit from uh, QRP Labs, it's called the uh, Ultimate uh, 3S, it's a QRSS and a WSPR uh, transmitter, which is a, uh, a whisper transmitter, and uh, in the kit you get uh, everything you need, pretty much. Uh, this is the, uh, the transmitter, then we have a, uh, a low pass filter, and we have the uh, the SI 5351A synthesizer board that needs to be put together as well. So we'll leave those two till last. Uh, I did actually think I'd ordered the uh, the 40 meter uh, bandpass filter, um, but it's got the 80 in. So no worries, we can uh, we can work with that. We can also. Uh, Modify that to 40 meters if we wish, but what I might do, I might just get another um, another set of bandpass filters and do all the different uh, the different bands and uh, put it on a relay or something to switch between the bands. Uh, but that'll be something for a later date. So we're going to leave these till last. These two, which is the uh, the synth board and the um, the bandpass filter, and we're going to have a look at the uh, the transmitter. Sneeze. Okay, so in the kit, we get a mixture of a few bits and pieces that we need to sort out. And apologies if my hands get in the way, but. Uh, I had a few comments from a few different people um, on the uh, the YouTube channel saying uh, his finger was in the way. I couldn't see what he was doing. So for those guys that uh, say my finger is in the way, I do apologise. But this is real life, and if my hand gets in the way, that's just how it is, and there's nothing I can do about it. So let's just sort out what we've got. We've got, we've got, we've got, we've got some various bits and pieces. There isn't many components here, to be fair. Not as many as I, uh, as I thought. Uh, we've got some capacitors, a resistor, some variable pots, a couple of push buttons. Various size headers and some header pins, a crystal which is a 2 meg crystal and a transistor which I can't see what that is at the moment, we'll have a look in a minute and then some uh, various fixings for the board so let's just uh, pop some of this stuff back in the bag that's not needed right now uh, not going to need the headers just yet so they can all go back in leave those out okay we also got a, a toyroid that we need to wind as well, but we'll get into that when we uh, when we get into it. So this is the uh, the PCB. And when you look at it, it looks like there's a lot more components than uh, than what you think. So let's uh, get the iron warmed up. That's a screen in here. Uh, where's my knife? Just uh, uh, 
and just an LCD so that's not needed just yet so I can go over there with the rest of the stuff and we'll get the iron warmed up now it comes with uh, quite a comprehensive uh, set of instructions that can be downloaded this is the instruction manual here I have had a quick uh, quick flick through it and it uh, it goes into great detail on uh, how to do stuff and what order to do it in although it does say that it's not uh, quite uh, that important that uh, it's all done in that order but uh, it recommends that you do follow the uh, the steps of the order just to make life a bit easier so um, have a look so yeah so it's a, a pretty comprehensive uh, booklet that shows you everything you need for the construction with uh, pictures and uh, text gives you everything you need it even shows you how to uh, to wind the toroid and uh, it gives you a few different options for the uh, for the various methods and uh, a few different uh, changes to the uh, to the toroid that they've uh, they've changed in uh, newer models from the older models so uh, it's uh, pretty good uh, instructions pretty good kits and everything that I've uh, that I've read about uh, the device seems to be pretty uh, pretty good and pretty uh, pretty useful information um, I think this one um, has the BS170 MOSFET on it now is that correct am I thinking of something else tell you what let's have a look see what it uh, see if I can see what it is Yeah, BS170. So it is the BS170. So I think that with the um, with this setup, it's probably. In fact, I'm not going to say probably. I'm going to have a look in the uh, the manual, and it's going to be about 250 milliwatts output, um, depending on the frequency that you're on. Okay, so there we go. So. As per usual, what we normally do is we normally uh, sort the parts out and um, sort the components out. But looking at what we've got here, we've got um, five capacitors, all of the same um, rating. We've got one uh, transistor or MOSFET. We've got a crystal, a couple of push buttons and a couple of variable resistors a chip and a chip socket so not a great deal to it so I suppose as usual we'll just start by um, inserting the components where they need to go just having a look now to see how well the board's marked out for the um, the components R5 C5 R3 yeah, it's all S1, S2. It's all pretty well marked up on there. I see a diode there. Oh no, it's an LED, is it? No, nope, diode. I haven't got a diode in there, so I don't know at the minute. So, anyway, let's just... Um, Let's get this iron warmed up then and then we can uh, make a start. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I've uh, stuck in the two variable resistors and 
one fixed resistor there. So we've got uh, R1 which is 100k uh, uh, potentiometer and uh, I believe that one does the, uh, the contrast uh, for the screen and that should be marked up uh, 104, that's this one over here. And then we've got uh, R5 which is another potentiometer which should be marked up 472 which is for biased in the, uh, the PA and it's uh, close to where the, uh, the MOSFET goes. And then we've got the uh, the 4.7K resistor, which is um, yellow, purple and red, uh, which should give you 4.7K, uh, and that one goes there. So I'll put those in first, starting with the resistors. We've only got three of those, uh, and then I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to put the crystal in, which I said was a 2.0K. Oh, it's not, it's a 20 uh, megahertz crystal, not a 2 meg. So I'm going to whack him in as well. And just bend the pins back just a little bit, just to stop it from falling out. And then we're going to uh, get it all soldered up. Okay, so that's all the resistors uh, on the board and the crystal. Next thing is the uh, the capacitors, which are let me just have a look. 100 nanofarad uh, capacitors should be marked up 104, and uh, they go C1456 and 8 is where we need them. So I'll get placing and uh, carry on soldering them up. If I can get them out. Okay, so we're looking for C1. See, uh, 
So we've got C1, C4, 5, 6 and 8. I can't even see C1. <coughs> C3, C2, no, can't even see C1 on that. down there, it's probably C1. Anyway, according to C4, C5, oh there's C1. Amazing, isn't it? When you're not looking, you spot it. Just bend them back a bit. C1. C1, C4. I want C5. Over here. Six and eight. So there's six. So C3 is not populated, so there must be some other configuration with this board. Okay, we've got C3 and whatever that one is there. There's C7. We want C7. No, we don't. We want C8. C6, C7, C1, C2, they're a bit badly numbered these because they're a bit scattered, if that's C1, got C2 over here, C3, C4, C5, C6, so is that C7 no, that's C7, that must be C8 then, is it? Okay, I'm going to have to revert to the, uh, the schematic and just see which is C8. Okay, so if we just look on uh, here, we can see now that C8 is in fact that one down there that uh, isn't marked on the board. So that will be this one will be C8 yep And then we can solder these up. So I'm going to uh, solder these up and then keep placing parts until we run out of okay, parts. So we've in installed all the uh, the components that uh, are in the pack there. All we're left with is the uh, the chip and a toroid and a bit of uh, a bit of wire. So I think the next stage will be winding the uh, the toroid, which I think is a ten turn. Uh, toroid so we'll um, refer to the uh, the manual for that and just check what uh, what we need to do I think it's uh, two wires doubled up and then um, and then th ten turns on the uh, on the toroid there which goes into here with the four wires um, but it looks as though that's pretty much all the components the only thing that's left is the headers uh, which I'm going to leave till last and I believe looking at this there's probably some links to put in as well because we've got a few uh, a few placements where some components aren't uh, populated um, and I believe there are options for 
other options on the uh, on the board, um, possibly for uh, external voltage and various other things as well. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to refer to the manual now and have a look, see what uh, what needs to be done for the uh, the toroid winding. Okay, and page 10, it says, uh, no, sorry, page 7, it says a 10 turn baffler winding. So it's basically uh, telling you to double up the, uh, the, the, uh, the wire here, uh, the magnet wire, and um, twist it together, and then thread 10 turns on the toroid. Uh, now, if you're familiar with winding coils, Every time it passes through the centre is classed as one turn, so uh, you can do ten turns and count that way. So uh, it says to put about uh, 40 to 50 tw twists into 15 centimetre length of wire uh, and then to wind ten turns onto an FT3743 toroid. Alright so I'll, uh, I'll get this cable twisted together and uh, we'll come back and wind the toroid. Okay so this is what we've uh, we've ended up with. Twisted together and we just need to give this now ten turns on here. So I don't think it matters where we start or which way we uh, we wind this. So I'm probably going to start Just go for it, really, making sure it's all nice and tight. So all we're doing, we're just uh, threading it through. <laughs> Keeping it neat and tight, basically. And we want ten turns of that. Now remember what I said at the beginning, apologies if my finger's getting in the way. But I uh, will try and show you. So just keep going around until you've got 10 turns. And remember what I said, you've got uh, every tight pass through the centre is classed as a turn. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six turns on there at the moment. So six turns. Another four should give us ten. I'm sort of running out of space, so I'm just going to uh, move these around a little bit just to give us a bit more room. Spread them out again once we've got to, got the ten turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
And that there should be one more. Should give us ten turns. Now we can spread this out now and just make it uh, nice and neat and equal. And when you're done, you should end up with something. like that okay now the next thing to do is just to uh, separate these wires now so we've got four ends and uh, those four ends will go uh, go on the circuit board in the relevant places um, as the instructions so uh, I'll, I'll get that split it up and uh, get that on the board okay so we've uh, Put the toyroid on, we've uh, mounted all the headers and soldered everything up. Uh, just one note to to, uh, to take on board is that when you solder the header for the screen, don't solder it on the front, make sure you solder it on the back so that it uh, mounts on the back of the, uh, the board. Otherwise you'll have a problem trying to... Uh, Plug your SI5351 in and the um, uh, bandpass filter. Uh, so that's pretty much everything on that board now apart from a few links. Um, which I'll need to have a look at the manual for. But I believe that we'll have to link down here on uh, W2, W3. Uh, possibly W1, W0. And, 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 I think there's a resistor that we link as well. It might be R2, but I'm not sure without looking at the manual. So I think there's, um, three, four, five, possibly five, 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 six, maybe seven links in various places. I think it's, uh, these resistors need linking. R2, R3 and R4 need linking, W1, W0 link and W2, W3 a link and I think we link A3 to A0 and also I think there's a few links down here at the bottom for um, various configurations uh, depending on um, what configuration you are using this board in. Um, but it's all it's all there in the instruction manual. I shall have a look in a minute and see what uh, what needs to be linked there. And then that is uh, basically the board complete. Uh, the main board just need to um, put the, pop the chip in, put the screen on, and then mount the uh, the low pass filter and the um, uh, SI fifty three fifty one synth board synthesizer board for it for the frequency change. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to call that there for now, um, and we'll get, we'll get on with the uh, the other bits, and then come back when we're uh, ready to power it all up. So we'll uh, we'll call that part one, and uh, we'll call part two uh, when we um, power it up and uh, see what it's capable of doing. So uh, thanks for watching. If you like my videos, don't forget to give a thumbs up. And if you hit that subscribe button, you'll get updates as and when we put new videos up. So thanks for watching, and look out for part two.